No doubt in the last couple of months you have used QR codes to get into cafes, to restaurants. They are, of course, how most of us are being tracked in the age of COVID. So why did QR codes become a thing? We're joined by Jesse Hughes, creative technologist and freelance technology writer. Peter Wells, uh, Peter, just what? how is it that we ended up using this thing at this exact moment? Well, I guess because COVID Safe turned out to be not that great an app. Uh, it, it's very frustrating, don't you think? We've spent all of this money on this this one centralised app that has all of the guardrails in place, all of the privacy in place to make sure that our data isn't being used or you know thrown into a marketing database and all of those kind of things. We checked all of that. We made COVID Safe. It doesn't work because it doesn't work on iPhones in the background. Uh, and so now we're left with uh, scanning in everywhere we go. And of course, because there is no national framework for that, who knows what's happening to the the location data we're giving away? So, Jesse, why is it that QR codes just became the thing that everybody flicked to? So we're talking about efficiency ultimately. Like, so the barcode. Um, if we go back to the 1990s, which is when the the QR code was kind of invented, barcodes were around, but they are 2D. So if you imagine reading from left to right, right, so that's one dimension. What a QR code does is you add a second dimension. So you go left to right, top to bottom. So you've actually now got a grid of information. So pretty much what it allows is more information to be stored, um, which I think uh, an interesting point, which I think is really cool about this. The design was actually inspired by the Chinese Go board, which so Go is like a game like checkers or chess. Yeah, and so this was developed in Japan in like the 1994 around then. Um, this awesome guy who was working for Denso Wave, and he wanted to be able to have a compact way to store an immense amount of information. This is when manufacturing was taking off. We had all these manufacturing, you know, companies taking off and they needed to be able to store lots of information in a quick and easy way. And so that's when the QR code was invented. Going forward to more modern times, this is when we started to getting to accessing information faster. So we are used to pressing on links online. That's a really good way to jump. But what a QR code does is allows us to link within the physical space to our digital world. And so that by doing that, we can pick up our phone, scan something in physical space, and then take it to a digital platform. So back in like 2012, around then, you had to actually have an app mm. to be able to read a QR code. And that was a whole thing of like, you'd have to go to the app store, download a QR code reader, then open mm. up that app to then scan a photo, right? In around 2017, Apple actually embedded a QR reader into their like their new update. So it made it a lot easier. Mm. I have like this bit of a love hate with the QR code, right? I sometimes find it faster to just type a link, but the pandemic has made it in the public eye and has been making sure that you have been forced to do it. So that's kind of a good way towards adoption, mm. <laughs> force. <laughs> Jesse's right. Once the QR code was kind of built into uh, the camera, the official camera app, and then the camera app was quick to access on the lock screen as well. I think that was the other step that you needed to be able to just quickly jump in. I find them fine and fast to use. WeChat, Snapchat it has its own version. Uh, Apple are actually coming out with their own version that will launch like mini apps. So there are, there are variations on a theme, but the ones that we're seeing for COVID are a standard. The difference is that uh, there are some that are officially kind of sanctioned by New South Wales government. They're the only ones who have really got a centralised version of this. So if you go into a hardware store that looks like Hammer Barn, for instance, <laughs> I know that they're using... It's a very specific they're reference using, to people with small children. <laughs> exactly. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. They're, they're using the official uh, New South Wales rollout, uh, which is quite good for in terms of your privacy and things like that. Um, other places can just be downloading QR codes from any random marketing generator, and that's that's where I'm a little bit worried. Is there anything you'd like to change <laughs> about QR codes, Peter? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, in terms of the current rollout, the current use as, as a COVID check-in system, I just want that to be... Uh, used for that purpose and that purpose only in, in the same way that COVID Safe stores the data for 14 days and then uh, gets rid of it so there's no ongoing record of, of you. Uh, I, I would love to see that kind of legislation uh, passed and it's it's kind of frustrating that right now we're only doing it at a state level. It's It's been up to the states to kind of make sure that uh, these QR codes are being rolled out so there isn't kind of a national framework and, and it's all there. It's all just sitting in, in all the legislation they wrote for COVID Safe. So I just wish that, uh, yeah, someone would get on board and uh, and put in some privacy uh, guardrails there. How about you, Jesse? 
I want it to automatically open, right? So where right now, when you have your phone and you put it over it, it pops up with a notification saying like, would you like to open in Safari or whatever? I just wanted to do it. Like I'm putting my camera there over <laughs> it on purpose. I know we're talking about milliseconds here, but when you are talking about digital user experiences and for like global adoption, milliseconds is the difference in a user experience. And so I think like if we put the phone over it, it automatically opens it up. You go straight to the page. I think that's going to make it a lot easier for people because I have seen um, like older users putting their phones over it, the, the notification pops up and they think that that's them signed in. Like that's it. But no, that's just the notification to press on it to open up Safari to then put in your details. So yeah, right. little these little millisecond things, like I, yeah, the designer in me is like, we need to fix them. But I think, you know, it's doing pretty well. Well, I mean, iOS 14 did get an update to make uh, open, opening your uh, phone when your mask was on faster. So yeah, that, that's See, a great yeah. point. There you go. Yeah. All right, there is lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. You can find it right now wherever you podcast. Thanks. Thanks.